okay. Active filter design lecture 18. In the last class we started a discussion about noise in, uh, in filters and the idea is that uh, we first try and figure out which elements have noise, get some intuitive feel about what all this noise stuff is uh, all about and then figure out how to make calculations of noise in filter networks. Um, we said that if you take a resistor R in thermal equilibrium with its surroundings which is at an absolute temperature T, then if you took this wave, this voltage waveform, correct and connected it to a bandpass filter centered at some random frequency f and with a bandwidth of 1 hertz and if you look at the waveform at the output and measure its mean square value, then it turns out that the mean square value is 4 k t r volt square independent of of what? Of the center frequency, okay. All right. So, uh, and this uh, 4 k t r being the noise power in a 1 hertz bandwidth, okay, is uh, called the noise spectral density and has units of what? Volt square per hertz. Please note that here we obtained volt square because 4 KTR has got volt square per hertz. We are measuring the power in a, the mean square value in a 1 hertz bandwidth. So, the hertz and hertz goes away and you get volt square. Okay. So, let us take, uh, an, I mean let us now get some physical intuition on uh, how these waveforms would look like in the time domain and what uh, many of these uh, uh, commonly used uh, uh, terms actually imply in the time domain. So, let me, um, uh, so even though uh, this is a, I have said this is a noise waveform representing that across a resistor, you should not take the scales too seriously, the scales are all 1, 2, 3 and so on, I mean what you would see would be in practice would be very, very, very small. Hmm? Now, the fact that the mean square value at the output of this filter here is independent of F means that the strength of this noise source is uniform across all frequencies since uh, in analogy with light, right, where when there is light of all colors mixed together, how does it look? It looks white. So, in the same way, this is what is referred to as white noise spectrum. Okay. And uh, even if you have not looked at noise before, if you have uh, a waveform with frequency components going all the way up to infinity, Right? What can you expect in the time domain? I mean you can think of white noise as you know as I mean a realization of one waveform of white noise as the sum of all frequencies weighted with, with uh, or weighted in the same manner which means what, what does it mean? I mean does this look like an impulse to you? Does this look uniform? What does it mean in the time domain is what I am asking you. Yes, so what? What, what, what is this? What is sync? And you can see that uh, even when I zoom in, it looks pretty much similar to the original waveform. If this was true white noise, if I went on zooming in and in and in, you will still see something which looks similar. Now, if I collect this data right, and then plot a histogram, what do you think it should look like? Please listen to the question carefully. 
if I now collect this time domain data, right? So I have many samples. I can plot a histogram, isn't it? How do you think it will look like? How will it look like? Chinmay, come later. This is too much. It's too bad. How will it look like? I mean, can you say anything at all? Yes, that's a that's a fact, but that's not what. Uh, why? Yeah, why? That doesn't mean the distribution is uniform, isn't it? For a sine wave, how does the amplitude distribution look like? Ah. So, okay, first thing is that just based on this, it is impossible to say what the amplitude distribution looks like. For those of you who have done the data conversion class, when you look at quantization noise, right, if you have a sufficiently uh, large number of levels in the quantizer, then the spectrum is white, right, but the amplitude distribution is, what is the, what is the distribution of quantization noise it's uniform okay all right so it turns out that in many physical systems the if you actually collect these samples and plot a histogram it turns out that the distribution is indeed is gaussian right so Okay, as you can see, all right. So, please note that the distribution has got nothing to do with the way the spectrum looks or the uh, the way the pass spectral density looks. You understand? Yes. Any problem, Dinesh? All right. So, this kind of noise is called white Gaussian noise. Okay. Uh, can whiteness be inferred from the histogram? Mean value is 0, fine. What I am asking you is, is whiteness, can this be inferred from the histogram? In other words, if I gave you this histogram, okay, it is pretty apparent or a reasonable guess is that this is Gaussian, right? But does whiteness also follow from the histogram? Yes, no, maybe? What is the y axis? Yes. You cannot say anything. The whiteness comes, how will you be able to figure out if the noise is white or not? I need to put in a band pass filter at f, measure the mean square noise coming out and vary f from 0 to infinity. If the mean square coming out remains substantially the same across all frequencies, then I can conclude that this is white. Alright? Okay, fine. So, the next experiment is to take this noise which is white and pass this through a narrow band filter okay of course i mean in practice the narrow band filter can't be the ideal brick wall narrow band filter because the ideal brick wall narrow band filter will be why is that not practical that's what i'm asking you why is it not possible Yeah, so what? Is there a more fundamental reason? Hey, any filter, the impulse response will go to infinity, man. 
e to the minus t by rc is the impulse response of first order rc filter which is not fast sharp at all and its response extends to infinity so what is the problem okay order will be high, uh, high but that is not a fundamental problem is not it so what if the order is high I will make a high order filter can I have a brick wall band pass or low pass filter yes no but uh, uh, so it is uh, because of causality reasons it is not possible to obviously implement a, uh, a brick wall band pass filter. So we choose a reasonable approximation to a brick wall band pass filter in this example I have chosen uh, I think uh, an 8th order Butterworth band pass whose pass band extends from 0.95 hertz to 1.05 hertz. In other words, this is a narrow band filter with a bandwidth of how much? Oh, you are not able to see clearly. Huh? Okay. okay. So, given that we have a 8th uh, order Butterworth band pass filter, we simply assume that it is an 8th order filter is pretty uh, sharp. Okay. So, we assume that this is equivalent to a, a brick wall filter with a bandwidth of 0.1 hertz. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, let us get some intuition on, on this stuff. This is how the impulse response of the brick wall looks like. Okay. Are you able to read the uh, x axis numbers at all or it is not possible? Okay, let me test your visual stuff by right. What does this number look like? Okay, good. Oh, some around about 18. What about this? Around 28 or so. What about this? 37. Okay, all right. Okay. So why does this impulse response make sense? I mean, this is the eighth order Butterworth filter from 0.95 hertz to 1.05 hertz. Okay. I went and found the impulse response. Uh, okay. 